Welcome. You're listening to another episode of ABOG, a band of gamers podcast. What's going on? If you're new to the show, you're listening at a very weird time. It's our second to last episode, and we've been celebrating on the last three. In this episode, we're talking about music discovery. Music has been a big piece of a band of gamers throughout the years, starting back when Shane joined on episode 12 or 13. Shane, I can't remember the exact number. 21. 21? Holy crap. Yeah. Okay, I was way off on that one. It's like 21 or 22-ish, <laughs> I think. That was in 2013. Music's a big part of our legacy. We wanted to be sure and hit it on the second to last episode and talk about all the great music that we've discovered through each other on the podcast. Because part of the show was music recommendations. And I've got a very long list here of great <laughs> music I've discovered from these two guys. And Brad. But, but not to worry. Because we got still have... Plenty of video games to talk about as well this episode. Oh, yeah. Do we really? Including a fan favorite. Fan favorite. What is it? Fan fa- listener favorite segment. Uh, <laughs> comes to a close this episode. The last one. That, of course, being the e-penis. Correct? Girl on that PlayStation number. Right. You know it. Awesome. See, I almost forgot that. We're going without an agenda this time. Keeping her loose. We've got our notes all on a, on a scratch paper. So we surprise each other with the discoveries that we've, we've all found in each other's suggestions. Yes. Scratch paper, MS notepad, you know, whatever, you know. Tattoo on the chest. Ooh. Yeah. So you should go out and tattoo these on yourself and not forget these great right? recommendations we're going to get to. I'm Joel, your MC, one of your three co-hosts in Milwaukee area. Brookfield, actually. Wisconsin joining me on this journey i'm flipping the tables back to where they were first of all from vancouver canada whoa right <laughs> it's been a while since i put shane first it's shane hey shane and i'm sorry i didn't even read if you wrote down anything clever nah, for the intro right, there man, i don't need to no man, we're good man we're you know half a world away here it's it's great man that's uh yeah doing all right man we're getting into uh the season the holiday season this is, the la- this is the last episode before the big day, you know? The big day being the last ABOG you're talking about, of course. Yes, second to last. We are fired up. We you know, do it right. All right. Good to be here. Good to, uh, you know, do this episode, I think. Couldn't do it without you. And another guy we couldn't do it without from Birmingham, England, is Carl. Oh. Hey, Carl. Hey, yeah, man, I'm feeling supersonic. Got some beers here, right? And I've just been chugging them this week, boys. I tell you, yeah, got, got some strong ones to talk about. Right. So, and yeah, man, God, penultimate episode, right? It's it's gonna gonna be a banger. Should we I set feel up? It. Feel it in the water. Should we set up a chaser so we have something to chug? I forgot about the new tradition we started on two two fifty one. Chug Ooh. chugging beers. Oh, it'll be. Yeah, you ain't chugging that, son. I am not chugging stouts. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even let you do that, sunshine. Carl held up a very hefty-looking dark stout that, yeah, probably couldn't chug that. But we'll save that for a little oh, bit he later. Could. He could. Well, well, he, yeah, he probably could. But we've got a lot to talk I, I about. I wouldn't be the episode for long, though. That's ah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the bed behind me. <laughs> Ooh. So a little bit of background here starting in, I don't know, I didn't look at the notes, uh, I don't know. Long time ago, we were playing music on the show. We were actually playing songs. And then eventually, we got to recommending full albums and reviewing full albums, or one of us would recommend an album, the other two would give their thoughts on it. So between playing songs, talking about music, and the, the suggester of the recommended albums for many years, and Brad's great music blog on our website, which is still there, at abandofgamers.com, we've got a lot of music to talk about. A lot. Let's get into it. The, uh, the first Santana record. Never really been a, a huge fan of Santana. I've always thought he was overrated, to be honest. I know people are going to like wince, wince when I say that. But Carl here turned me on to that, the first Santana record, the self-titled album. Yes. And ever since, uh-huh. I've sort of, sort of fell, 
fell over uh, heels here for Santana. The man, he may not be the most technical player, and as a somebody that's always been lofted out there as one of the best ever, I sort of wanted him to be this technical guy, this amazing prowess. But it's his fingers, it's his soul that he puts into his music that really is impressive. And that record, the self-titled record, stands out even more than Abraxas to me. So great recommendation recommendation from Carl there, that Santana record. Another guitar player who I didn't have a lot of respect for. I just, every time someone talked to me about him, I'm like, yeah, whatever, ho-hum. Joe Badamasa, another recommendation from Carl. And now, oh, yeah. now I'm kind of big into Joe Badamasa these days. Guy's a good player. I really like his style, like his personality, his attitude. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a who-gives-a-shit kind of a player. And I really appreciate that in him. And his, his playing is still is brilliant, honestly. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's churned out another good album this year. It's, uh, you know, a buddy of mine was like, man, you got to listen to this new Joe B album. It's album of the year. And um, it, it, it's not quite up, up there, but y- you can't deny that the guy has churned out so many quality records over the years. And, uh, you know, it, I, went, I kind of got into him around Slow Gin and the Ballad of John Henry, um, those earlier records, I suppose they are now. And, um, yeah, phenomenal. Like, he, he just nails the, uh, the, the the origin of the blues and um, just got some killer riffs in there. Really, really good stuff. So I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad you got turned on to that. Another guitar player. My list is way longer than these guys, so I'm going to rattle off a few. No. <laughs> rattle yeah, off keep a rolling, few man. Before we get everybody going here, Johnny Marr, another guitar, oh. guitar player that I didn't really have a huge appreciation for. I knew who he was. I knew what his heritage was. Then Shane turned me on to him specifically in his playing. So Johnny Marr, man, from the Smiths. Underrated. Good player. Very underrated. So melodic. I, I, I love those type of guitar players. You probably, most people, really want, if they went through my, my iPod or whatnot and my record collection and whatnot, they wouldn't, you'd, you wouldn't think it. And then Marr, he's such a beaut, man. Such a beaut. One more guitar player on the list in a band called La Sera with his lovely wife, Katie. Todd, who I didn't know, Shane, until just recently, does it used to do the guitar demos on Norman's rare guitar videos on YouTube. I had no idea he he did that. Yeah, he him and uh Michael Lemo um stepped in stepped up when uh the other uh, gent that did it now um uh crap what's his name? Uh Mark Mark Agnesi who moved on from Norman's rare guitars to uh take a a nice spot uh, working for Gibson guitar and helping their rebranding and kind of they've turned the company around quite a bit um for the past uh, few years and whatnot. So they have Michael Lemo come in and Todd Weisenbaker in there as well. And yeah, Todd's a unbelievable, phenomenal guitar player. <laughs> Last era, I saw saw them live and they're absolutely brilliant to see him go off and i remember you know meeting him afterwards and be like dude you did like can i have my face back because it's just face melting <laughs> just ripping on this jazz master unbelievable super super and then i saw him again when he was playing with uh ryan adams and just great support um just a one of my uh favorite guitar players that i've uh, learned through this show as well so yeah shout out to them yeah, and that La Sera record, which I ended up buying. Uh, the, the name of the record is probably one of the favorite album names that we've had yes. throughout our history. This one's called Music for Listening to Music To. Fucking right? love that song. I love that album title. Yeah. Classic. I got a couple copies of that one and uh, got, a, got him and uh, uh, Katie to sign that one. So I got that signed up on the wall. Proud of that one. All right. I got us started. You guys want to keep it going here? Sure thing. I could jump in and uh, an album that actually we we played. Uh, me and the missus played this on uh, Saturday. Um, Krungbin that uh, yay Joel recommended and um, uh, Contado El Mundo is the album that um, that I think yeah, you, you recommended on the show. And man, I've, I've spun that so much, so much. Um, it's just the perfect relaxation album, and you just have it on the background. The great musicians. Um, sounds superb on vinyl, and um, yeah, it's just it's a really just a chill time. Like it, it's kind of been my go-to record and and phase now as well. You know, if we want something, to, want to put something on and want some music on, but you don't want anything. You know, well, I mean, a lot of my music is in the heavier spectrum, but you want something that's chill. You no, know, you you know, play the game, or you want to be doing something else, man. That's uh, yeah, that record rips. Really, really great recommendation that was. And that band I discovered going to see Valerie June. They opened for Valerie June. 
We like to get to shows a little early, but usually right when the headliner starts is our plan. Maybe have dinner, have a drink or something, get there, show up, see the headliner. But this band we got, we, we checked out before we, when we, we were thinking, but the day of, before we went down there, heard enough of it to think we should get there for the opener. We should check out this band. And ever since we've been, my wife and I have been a big proponent of getting there early and seeing the openers because you discover so many great bands that way. And Krungbin, we discovered that yeah. way. And they were small at the time. So after the show's over, we got their autograph, bought a record. They've gotten, nice. pretty, they've gotten pretty big. Like I hear them in a lot of commercials now. And speaking of uh, commercials, Valerie June is in the latest Apple commercial. She's got a tune yeah. going oh. in there. So both of them. But Valerie June's on my list as well, mate, to be fair. I, I went out and bought that record after you recommended it. And um, it, it was, yeah, that's like that, that gig where you saw her for the first time. It was either that one or I think when she did like a... Uh, a sign-in session or something, and uh, I was like, "Man, I've got to go and check this record out." So that that, that was a belter as well. Um, I think it was the first pushing uh, pushing against the stone or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I think that's right. The name now, but, uh, yeah, great. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Great yeah. to see them both. You know, succeeding. Yeah, first time we saw Valerie June, it was at a local radio station, like an independent station, and there was a giant snowstorm. We made our way down there. There wasn't many people there. Yes. And we didn't have any cash on us, and we wanted to buy, yes, a, buy a record. Yeah, and uh, I had to go to the time machine as fast as I could. The Excuse me, ATM machine, as most of you know it, to, to get some cash in a snowstorm while my wife was waiting in line to buy the album. And Valerie was there in, at the head of the, the line signing records. I got back. My wife was standing next to Valerie June like, hurry, you got the money. I'm like, I got the money. <laughs> I had like a little bit of a, a moment there with Valerie June, you know, like, hey, that's so cool. You went and grabbed cash and thank you so much. I'm like, for sure. Those are the best shows, man. I mean, you get to see those intimate performances. You get to talk to the artist. I, I love that. My wife and I still, those are, we don't really go to big shows anymore. We, we really try and get to those smaller venues and have those more intimate experiences with the artists. As a matter of fact, Jeff Rosenstock is coming again, which he is fantastic live. Last we saw him was in a small little pub, and it was just the greatest experience. And now he's playing Turner Hall, which is a little bit bigger, and it's like, eh, maybe we'll go. But it's just not the same when you get those little intimate performances. You feel like you're part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then you get those a little bit bigger, and you get a little more people in there, and everybody's singing. True. I just love the singing. I love, And that's the, re- the only reason why I love some of the bigger venues and whatnot. Is when you're like, I remember seeing uh, Oasis and just being like 40 rows back, you know, there's probably 12, 13,000 people. And we were literally like linked arm in arm, everybody singing, you know, live forever and whatnot. And it's just, just magic when you get that. But then at the same token, when you do see some of these more intimate shows and just be able to have a chat with, you know, a, you know, a member or two of, of the group and whatnot, it just, it really, yeah, it solidifies them. You know, it was just one of those bands that you, you'll, you'll always have a, just a, uh, uh, a deeper connection with by, by visiting uh, shows that like that. I think it takes, a, it takes a special band, right, to play those really large venues and have a moment. I'm sure yeah. Oasis definitely falls in that category. Yeah. Oasis yeah, definitely. That, that, the, the, the bands that can actually do it and pull that off are very, very hard to find now. For real, totally. And, and right. it, you feel like you've struck gold, as I mean, I don't. It doesn't happen very often, but you know, people talk about you know you, you get the memories from 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 gigs and that, and they they, they last a lifetime. You know, you put the phones away; you don't you don't need them. And mm-hmm. uh, yes, the first the first time I I saw uh, Blackstone Cherry, like it was a tiny tiny venue, and um, they, they just released the the debut record, and it was a banger. And I was like, oh, these guys are going to be huge like you're never going to get a chance to see these guys in a venue like this again and um i, I grabbed a guitar player went down to the uh, the bar fly in birmingham cost like i don't know four or five quid to get in and um and they played just a face melting set and um and it, you know it was half full probably 60 people in there 70 people right and they're like yeah we'll come chat after the gig and um the drummer john i was chatting to him john fred uh for ages after after the gig because he did a um he did moby dick the led zeppelin drum solo and he's the only drummer I've ever seen. Like, just just replicate it live. It was, it was awesome. And I'm and I'm and I'm there, like paying six quid to get into this show, and you know, 
couple of groshes and I think, Jesus, this was this was a great night. And it's one of the things you almost don't go to. You're like, oh, do we go? It's only six quid. Oh, you know, you woman are, and then when you go and it pays off, it's like, yeah. And and ever since then, they've been on the, you know, sorry, John, but they've been on the Danewood trajectory pretty much. You know, they they they've gone to big arena tours. They've gone massive worldwide, um, but they'll never never get that magic back that they had in their, in their first kind of two records really, which is a shame. But yeah, that, that's that's what I love about it, I must admit. Shane mentioned Oasis, and I did not discover Oasis through these two guys. I discovered them way, way back, saw them live long before I met Shane and Carl. But I learned to love Oasis through Shane and Carl. My appreciation grew tenfold <laughs> thanks to these guys always talking Oasis, including that one episode when I wasn't there, and it was practically the whole episode Right. <laughs> was Oasis chat. But these two guys have got me to learn to, to appreciate that band a lot more than I, I did. I, I, I liked them. I thought they were good, but never to the depth of today as much as I appreciate them today. So Oasis and just Brit pop in general, rock Brit pop. Yeah. Bands. These guys have been at me for quite a while because I'm in the US here. It's not really my cup of tea usually. I dip my toes in the water with Oasis, but come on, Oasis is pretty mainstream compared to most rock Brit pop. So I've got a list of rock brit pop stuff oasis i just mentioned obviously liam gallagher's solo record it's called all you as you were yes you were yeah great great album i do love Noel gallagher's as well but i don't think i would have discovered liam's if it wasn't for these two guys to this day i still put that record on can't go without mentioning Supergrass. oh yeah Yeah. i should coco where these two guys were like there. I don't know if it was your, it was both of their attempts to get me more into like yes. rock, Brit pop. And they're like, you got to listen to this record right here. And they hoisted it up there. Very good album. Still put it on on occasion. I should Coco. Yeah. That's a banger of an album. I think Carl and I were playing FIFA and we're like, you know, we got to force Joel. Let's, you know what? Fuck it. Force <laughs> let's <him>. recommend, let's <laughs> force him to get into a little bit. What's a good, you know, gateway, you know, album that has a lot of depth and whatnot. And that, that album is, absolutely brilliant it is a fantastic one and super super happy that you uh that you enjoyed that one joel yeah and for all of these and i'm sorry we didn't include episode numbers to throw you back and check out those original conversations but we have a great search tool on our website abandagamers.com up in the right corner it's a little magnifying glass if you click that type in supergrass it'll take you right to that episode so go back and check out the episode when they forced me using your uh, the, True. the quote <laughs> from shane there Right. To, to listen to I Should Coco. Now, seriously, we were recommending albums to each other. Shane and Carl decided, let's recommend that because Joel has to listen to it. We have to talk about it. And I'm really glad they recommended that one. Damon Albarn, also on the list. Didn't really know of Blur much. Of course, I knew of Gorillas, but that Damon Albarn uh, solo record, I believe yeah. Shane recommended. That's been great. I haven't checked out his new one yet. I really need to. I listened to it for a minute, but I, I need to get deeper into that. And then last and certainly not least, The Stone Roses who I discovered in the 90s, a gal I was dating at the time, had the record. Ooh. Carl sent it in one of our Christmas boxes. Still put that on. Excellent album. I think it's the original uh, release, the first release. Yeah, be yeah. the debut. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah, first record. The Stone yeah, first Roses. record's superb. Um, second one, I, th- I think, uh, wasn't too bad. It got a little bit more commercial, I suppose. And then there was a side project, The Seahorses, which kind of cropped up after the Roses had split up. John Squire. Um, I was on guitar and uh, Chris Helm on vocal. That record's brilliant, and um, we never got to talk about that one in the you know in a, a couple of hundred episodes. But uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to listen to that one, it's an absolute banger. And I do have a copy of the second album, The Seals, is recorded, but they never released it, um, which has got some fun tunes on as well. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, John John Squire, he kind of is a bit iconic in the whole Britpop scene, and uh, it, Britpop was a whole weird thing as well because it kind of killed heavy metal, heavy metal and rock music in the UK uh, for the, most of the nineties. You know, you, the US had this grunge scene, and uh, you had some great rock bands and stuff, and we uh, we went completely the other way. Um, but I still loved it; like it was just a great time to be around. But uh, yeah, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you took that, mate. Yeah, some people over here would think thought that grunge sort of killed rock. Because it was this, this kind of a lazier rock, yeah. just so distorted, and you could get away with not as proficient the playing. Guys like Eddie Van Halen, all those just amazing guitar players, sort of got buried under a wall of noise, which wasn't wasn't a bad thing. It was, it was cool. We went through that. I had no idea in the, in the UK there that you guys kind of went a different direction because grunge here was like a five year thing, if not longer. It took a while to get back to like some 
different rock again. What else you got? I've, I've, I'm seriously, I'm trying to get ahead of you here because I got a much larger, <laughs> longer list. Uh, one that, that Brad recommended, uh, I'm on the sniffers. Um, Australian band, kind of a punk garage band, and uh, their self-titled album. It's got a, it's got kind of a white cover on there. I love that album. I think it's great. It reminds me of very early White Stripes, and it just has that same feel. And I haven't heard anything close to anything like that um outside of this album uh it's brilliant and it's been a great recommendation i've but the 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 list i have is all stuff that is like on regular rotation after all these years i'm I'm still i still go back to and i still enjoy and i still listen and that album is uh, definitely one of them nice and you you brought jack white there and that's somebody i've got to throw into the mix as well because i was not a fan of the white stripes i was not um uh, you know i i they weren't my cup of tea. I thought that, you know, it was a bit, the drummer was awful, lazy, and I just, I wasn't into it. And Whoa. after the, talking to these two guys, uh, yeah, look, I had my hands up. I was True. wrong. Um, and uh, and after talking to these two guys and, you know, kind of understanding, listen, I listened to this, you know, I've listened to this one. And then um, I think his solo album, Lazaretto, just, just hit with me. I thought it was a fantastic record. That was really, really good. And, um, and then I went back and listened to a load of the other stuff and uh, kind of understood how, Jack makes his music and why the drum patterns were the way that they were. And it kind of just made me appreciate it a whole lot more. And, you know, um, I, I kind of, it was a band I always dismissed in the past and uh, yeah, got to learn a lot more and glad I did. Glad you did as well. Cause the white stripes is, is absolutely brilliant. And I do not think that Jack white will ever top his white stripe stuff. I think that is his absolute creme de la creme. How, he was able to put it together and use, you know, gear that is so ancient and whatnot and pull it off and have great sounding albums and just some great tunes. Yeah. And I think it's not because he doesn't, hasn't put out great music since and not because he won't continue to put out. I mean, the Rack and Tears, for example, yep, is a so. great album. I just think when you hear Jack White, you, I hear White Stripes. Same. So he can't escape that because of people like us, right? He, no matter yep. how hard he tries. He still has that sound in his voice. He's still Jack White. He'd have to completely change his voice, completely change his style. And he has tried. He has tried. But I think uh, people like us are going to keep him trapped under the White Stripes thumb there forever. Yeah. So many, just so many, not just gems, but just so many great classic rock, just, just basic garage rock, like, you know, drums and guitar. You know, and and just a great melody, and he and he always wrote really great lyrics as well. Uh, definitely, if you haven't spent a whole lot of time with White Stripes, definitely go back and dig some of that stuff up. I've seen some reissues of this next record. I'm going to mention. I have not yet jumped on it. I should, because it's probably going to be hard to get. I know it's hard to get, but there have been reissues, so I've had chances. But when we were in Vancouver, Carl and I, after MGC, flew out to Vancouver, hung out with Shane for a week. Shane took us up to Whistler to check out the, uh, the beautiful mountain there and the, the beautiful view all the way up to Whistler from where he lives. And he had on in, in his car, Foxy Shazam. Oh, oh, great, oh, great man, I album. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, still, I love that. Dude. I still put that one on. I don't have the album yet. I really need to pick it up. But that's a great, completely different from everything we've ever talked about and listened to on the show. And it was a real pleasant surprise when Shane pulled it out in the car on the way up to Whistler. Never in a million years would have expected that type of record to be on. I mean, he had us in his car. He had us in, in his jukebox. And that's what he played. And what a great album. Carl and I were both mm. bobbing oh, to that dude. one on the way up to the Whistler. It, f- it felt like we were in a Tarantino movie. It was just wicked. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, Foxy Shazam's uh, self-titled album. Uh, fantastic. Highly, highly recommend. Actually, it was recommended to me from Plank Fan. And... The first couple of times I listened to it, it was kind of, and then kind of put it away for like a month, or whatever, and dusted it off. And I was like, holy, all right. Uh, now it's hitting. And I still, that, that is a regular played album for me. That album and their one after that, The Church of Rock and Roll, just that, that period of them, just so, it's got a bit of, bit of Queen in there, you know, a bit of, you know, Green Day, a bit of, you know, just a mix of all sorts. And it just works so great on that album. So 
Wow, yeah. I didn't expect you to bring that one out. Yeah, definitely, Damn, definitely the Queen. I mean, very, it definitely has that Freddie mm. Mercury vibe to it. Just it's got it, it's just got that happy kind of major key upbeat to it. Just some horns in there, right? It's kind of rock. Yeah. Great album. And big cool. choruses, big yeah. stadium. Yeah, choruses. It, you know, I it love struts. That. If a record could strut, that record struts. There you go. It's like we've done this before, right? Knowing how to talk about it. It struts. Epic. Yeah. Carl moment there. Here at the second to last episode of ABOG. <laughs> All right, guys. What else you got? Um, I'll throw another um, uh, one in from Joel, which became a massive, massive favorite of mine, uh, is Janelle Monet. And um, mm. we were talking about, uh, and this is kind of a twofold one, really. Um, Joel was talking about uh, the, an album she did, The Ark Android, and uh, listened to it a couple of times. And uh, and then the missus was also a fan of Janelle Monet, not, not unbeknownst to me, and, um, and just started listening to a lot of it. And uh, yeah, Dirty Computer came out and over... Over the, the course of sort of three years or whatever, it's four years it's been, I suppose. It's kind of become our record, you know. It's be, it be just she's just such a phenomenal talent. Like you know, we went to see her live, just blew blew the blew the roof off the prize. Unbelievable, unbelievable performer. And um, yeah, man, it's, if Joel hadn't mentioned it, like originally, I probably it wouldn't have come into my head. Wouldn't have had had listened to that. I bought the bought the vinyl as well. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a great, great piece of work, um, and she's just yeah, almost one of these generational talents. She's just so, so talented. So yeah, yeah, completely out of my wheelhouse. Not my normal thing, but God, I do love her records. I think we're all getting a tickle here from some of the stuff that's getting pulled out. See the smiles right? on our faces. <clears throat> Glad you remember that one. And if anybody hasn't heard Janelle Monae or maybe has gotten past her because she's so huge, check out Arc Android. She does like heavier music on that one. There's this yeah. wide variety of styles of music she does on that and really really shows off her talents. Nice. Got to go with the uh, Milwaukee's own, Wisconsin's own legend, uh, great, great friend of the show. Um, would never have heard of if it wasn't for Joel, but the man, Brett Newski. Um, definitely that folk punk oh yeah you know did you know acoustic you know and now he's gone a little bit of electric new ski goes electric uh it's it's one of the favorites and he's such a such a great dude to we had a great interview with him sit down and chat which was which was amazing and you know just messaging back and forth and you know staying in touch and whatnot he's just an absolute gem one of the good guys um also put out a, a book uh, dedicated to uh, uh, mental health that, that, you know, came out at the right time, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of shows, everything kind of shut down and whatnot. And, you know, he was able to adapt and, you know, did a book, you know, uh, it's hard to be a person and dedicated to mental health, which is, you know, absolute stand up guy and, and brilliant. So yeah, Brett Newski boys. Love it. I bought the book. Phenomenal book. It's going to be gifted to my sister going in her in her stocking nice she struggles with some work stress gets real worked up and gets some anxiety out of it yep. and I, I have a feeling that if she takes the time to read it i actually think it's going to heal her up a little bit it's a great little book of course with his sense of humor but uh definitely check out brett newski you can find him at brett dot com. gotta give him a plug or you can go to our website oh, and just, yeah. just search for brett newski or listen to episode 92 i think if i remember correctly is where we have the interview with him yeah, and he's also, you know, started up a podcast as well in between, you know, not being able to play shows for a while. Yeah. And he's actually going to do an interview with uh, Butch Vig. Oh, wow. I saw, I don't know if it's out or if it's coming out, but it's going to be mega that one. Another Wisconsin boy, Butch Vig, I believe. Yeah, out of Madison, I believe. And he's, uh, he's hit us up a little bit to help get that podcast started. So an honor to help him, us veteran podcasters, as he refers to us. Like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a, he's a happy to such help. a goofball he sure is he's welcome to stop on my sofa for any time if he comes over to europe again um i'll go with another local one to joel actually uh, abby jean and Ooh, the, the, yes. her album music box dancer which is um a voice was just and that's the thing that just sucked me around the face it was just like wow this this girl and i think she worked in like a coffee house or something didn't she joel um yeah at the time 
obviously it's moved on to Pastor Jun new now, but um yeah, she was just so talented. Great album. Yeah, the coffee house is the Hi Fi Cafe. It's right across the street in Milwaukee in Bayview, actually, a suburb of Milwaukee, across the street from Rushmore Records, which specializes in like punk records. Great little mm. local shop. And the Hi Fi Cafe to help her out, to help, to help Happy Jean, started their own record label and, and uh, released her first record there on that label. So yeah, she's great. Good callback. Direct Hit, which is a, uh, a Wisconsin band, a Wisconsin punk band. Their album, uh, Wasted, Wasted Mind, absolutely phenomenal great punk rock record i think it's their best definitely one to check out you look like a punk rock that's yeah it doesn't get much better than than wasted mind from direct hit great 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 band uh, lots of milwaukee stuff here i love it brett newski abby jean direct hit i love it direct hits great such right. a such a great band and now they own he co-owns nick the lead singer guitar player co-owns a, a, a venue here in milwaukee called x-ray arcade where they have a bunch of arcade machines and live music. It's like, it's like the abandoned gamer, gamers venue right there. Right. Kind of cool. Maybe well, I, can, I can stick with that punk vibe if you want. Um, yeah. Cause I've got a couple here, which I uh, was lucky enough to see it download after some, some dude on this show recommended them and uh, both were phenomenal and um, uh, bad cop, bad cop. First and foremost, they, uh, oh, yeah. they Pop their first record out. Uh, it's for they, 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 are they from Canada, Shane? Um, no, no, they're from the California, I believe. California, uh, yeah, four, four girls loud as hell, man. They, they blew the roof off the turn of download, just so impressive live, really, really great. And um, the interrupters and uh, their fight the good fight album, just yeah, another banger. And they, they literally followed each other back to back, so just stayed in the tent, just like this is going to be brilliant. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, a little uh, little deviation from the from the heavy stages. Go in there, and listen to those. But yeah, both uh, both killer albums. I've got Bad Cop, Bad Cop on my list as well. Uh, the Warriors record I wrote yeah. down, and, and the Interrupters I think came to us from Iron Boss. John, a listener. Yes, he's listener. a big fan. Uh, yeah. Yes, it did come from John. Yeah, yeah. Love when listeners would give us recommendations, and you still have a time because we're not going anywhere. abogpod at gmail dot com. Give us those recommendations, even if it's five years from now, we'll still take them. Love a good recommendation. Is it my turn? We we sticking on punk? I think so. Yeah. All right. I think I don't think I discovered this through Shane. Probably not. I may have, but Shane certainly reinforced it and helped me see to the the second record. I think it was the Dirty Nil. Yes. Great yes. band. Great band. And now my buddy Vince is huge into them, and like his circle yep. of friends is into them. And I think when they started off, they were more of like a Beatles kind of rock kind of a thing going on. But then they went just a little bit more punk with their second album. Though I can't think of the name of it. The one with the skull on it. Little face kind of oh, in the skull. Oh, yeah. Um, Should have wrote it down. I didn't. But the Dirty Nil, man. Great, great band. I think we could categorize them as punk. Maybe a little rock in yeah, there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, Master Volume. Too. Man, Master Volume. Master Volume. Thank you. Th that's the one with that Hit the Lights cover, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> which is just superb. And um, I think I think I listened to one track off that, and I was sold. And uh, yeah, the record is sat there now. Uh, They've done some phenomenal covers. Like they do, like their cover of Unchained is just oh yeah, just brilliant, man. They're they're such a great band. I think I think I rec recommended them to you, and then like a week later, I think Vince tapped you up on them as well. I was like, dude, you got to hear these guys. So it was like a, a combination. Within like a week or so, it was like we're both, you know, knocking on his door, like, e check this guy's out. There, there's something else. But yeah, the the uh, minimum R and B it was their album before that that I got into, and they're a little bit more cleaner. Yeah, great record, start to finish, great record. But then when they came out with Master Volume, it was, it was just that man. You you turn that on, crank it up, you know. Hell Let yeah, the neighbors know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the record from this year is pretty good as well. Fuck art. It's um, mm -hmm. it's it's a bit. Uh, uh, the, the first track just gets me every time. It's like Doom Boy. Like it, it, it kind of be your, your you know you do Metal Boy. Like it it's, just makes me chuckle uh, when I hear yeah. that. Um, but yeah, the the big I don't know if there's a good. Master, it's still uh, yeah, it's still a cracking record. 
Yeah, and just a reminder, if you didn't hear in the last episode, the behind the scenes, we do record live, get a little bit of latency here and there, and Carl, it's a tiny bit of latency there, but not, not, not too bad, I still understand Uh-oh. it. It's all good. So I just want people to know, you know, because we take a lot of pride in the production and the quality on this show. Uh, White Lung, another punk kind of-ish band that Shane turned me on to from Vancouver. They're yes. from. Saw them in yeah. Milwaukee, dragged my whole crew of friends to see them. Nobody yeah. was there. It was such a quiet show. Got to meet Kenny afterwards. Got to meet uh, the, the other two, not the drummer. Um, what's the lead singer's name? I'm sorry. I can't think of her name. Right. But I walked up to her. I'm like, where's Kenny? <laughs> She's like, oh, man. Kenny, get out here. Meet this guy. He's totally drooling over you. Get out here. She's so great. In her, <laughs> so great in her own right. You know, but it was so great to see White Lung. Really like that. I think it was my record of the year that year, too, if I recall. Uh, 14 or... Like all of our... 15, yeah, I think it was, a, it was a triple... Yeah. Because I saw him I saw in Birmingham at the same uh, same tour, I think. And, um, yes. Uh, I, I, I spoke to... And again, I can't forget her name. This is awful. I can't remember her name. This Mish. is bad. And Mish. Thank you. Um, and she was kind of stood out on the terrace, like outside the boozer. And it was, again, it was deserted. No one there. So I chatted a little bit. Um, and then they, they played the set, killed it. There's probably, um, oh God, maybe 30, 40 people in the flapper and Firkin in Birmingham, if that. And um, the drum was great. Like, I thought she was so great. And I was, I was like, I want to talk to her after the show. And she never came down. I was like, ah, okay, never mind. <laughs> One out of three ain't bad. So yeah, she didn't come out for our, for my show either. It was just her and uh, the singer and, and Kenny there, Mission Singer and Kenny. Another uh, punk ish band from Shane, Dog Party. Great, oh yeah, they're great, great Ooh. band. Great. I love the guitar work, especially is what really gets me going with that Dog Party record. The album's called Hit and Run, I believe. Yes, fun little album. So I feel like I'm getting keep it on the punk train. I feel like I'm getting caught up here. So right, right yeah, around yeah. where where your lists are. Rolling. So we, yeah, we get right. through them. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on that punk train and throw some no effects in. Um, Whoa, a band I hadn't listened to at all, and they've been around donkeys. Um, but again, Shane, Shane had listened to. Him. He's thrown a few albums my way, I think that year. And um, the first did Jeff was kind of the first record of theirs I actually listened to, and I was supposed to be. Probably when I was fairly new to the show, maybe 2016-ish, maybe something around that time, 2015, 2016. Um, that record rips. It really, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Um, just bangs all the way through. And then you've got that great little outro with like the, 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 the two girls, the two kids singing, um, like Generation Z. Um, it's just, yeah, just I could listen to that over and over. Such a good record. And uh, and again, you yeah, got to see them at Downloads, luckily. Uh, I think it was two years ago. And um, they were kind of headlining the second stage and it didn't quite clash so I managed to watch like half an hour of them before moving across I think it was Sabbath they were up against so cool. um, they uh, they did okay considering yeah <laughs> um, but yeah g- great entertaining band really good fun uh, and another one that's just been around for so long and I just never even knew so cheers Shane Fontaine's DC oh yeah and uh, Carl here recommended uh, they, they got two albums out uh, fantastic. Just really good stuff. Uh, Dog Grill and A Hero's Death. And they're kind of both polar opposites of each other in a way. Uh, the first album, Dog Grill, is you know, a lot more kind of garage, a bit more of a punk vibe to it. And then yeah. they kind of fit this, flip the switch on A Hero's Death where it's a little bit more Smiths-like, you know, very Johnny Ma, you know, kind of vibe to it, which I absolutely love. It's, it's the one I usually usually go to. It's just so unique, so cool. Dripping in Irish heritage. You can, you, gotta, you can hear U2 in there, even though they are... That early bit. Yeah, even though they're nothing like U2. Carl recommended the album Dog Rel, and now there's another, like their sophomore one is out. And I think this one came from a friend of yours, Carl. Is that right? All, it's also on my list. So thank you, Shane. I checked it off here <laughs> as well. Did indeed, yeah. My, my buddy Chris Jones, he's, he sent a few recommendations in over the uh, over the years, and uh, and he was like, yeah, you got to listen to this, and he throws some stuff by way. Some of it sticks. I throw some stuff his way. Some of it sticks. So I think I feel like we we netted each other off. You know, I gave him Creeper, and he gave me a Fontaine's DC. So yeah, it's um, it's they're a great band, really, really great. And I, I've I've had the chance to see them numerous times, and not not managed it yet. Um, so hopefully, once the pandemic is well and truly over, um. They'll be on my list to, uh, to to catch up with, but yeah, like you say, first album really just bangs, doesn't it? It's, it's just so raw and so um, 
it kind of just hits with all you know the undercurrents of the Irish um, kind of economy and the way of life. And and then the second one is more uh, kind of reflective on what they've already done and and you know kind of what where do they go and and, and stuff from there. So they, they they are kind of polar opposites. I do agree. Um, but uh, but both good records really are and uh, yeah it's just nice to see bands like this are still coming through you know they're still you know we're talking about records in the last two years so good to see yeah we can't go without mentioning a metal album i mean carl's here right and carl's he's kind of more the metal guy nowadays i grew up on metal i've got a lineage in metal but when it comes to me and metal i usually stick with the old stuff the newer stuff I've, i've gone a different direction but this record parkway drive took me all the way back to my metal yep. metal roots it's called Reverence. Great album. Got the vinyl. Still jam it out. Of all the great metal albums that Carl has shared, that one sticks the most for me. The Parkway Drive. Heavy, heavy album. Not just not just the music. There's a, some great, great subjects. Just brilliant, heavy record. Oh yeah. I mean, I know I won't bring the tone of the show down too much, but the album hit at a time in my life where it was incredibly low. And the, the lyrics on there are just, just, just kill you. Like they're just straight yeah. in there, and they're just stick in your heart, stick in your head. And I was like, man, this, this is the record that like it's a life changing record for me. It always will be, um, because it gave me the realization to change what what was going on in my life, you know. Um, and then they toured, they played Download, and I remember being in. And I was I was with the lads, and we we're like, right, we're in the pit, and we were like, t- probably. I don't know, 15 rows from the front. And we were like, eh, well, the pit will probably be in front. You know, we'll probably be in around. We can get in and out if we want to. And then they came on and, like, <laughs> the whole area was the pit. And it was just the most incredible. It was it was just so, so good. And I was covered in bruises when I, I got home and I was just black and blue. And <laughs> but it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. And, um, yeah, it's just I, I, again, I, I think it might be the peak. I, I don't. I don't want to say it, it's going to be the peak when they're, they're probably due an album now for sure. But uh, that one is a banger for, for sure. I'm so yeah. glad you enjoy it uh, as much as I am. Um, you know, much as I did. True, definitely. And um, I can throw in um, an album I enjoyed very much, and this might be a bit random as well. But uh, we, we're getting away from metal now. Uh, the Budos Band, uh, the Joel recommended. That, and, and uh, very much like uh, the Krungbin, you know, this is this is one that I like to chuck on and almost have as a palate cleanser. You know, we just want to hear good musicians just playing, and that's uh, I can't know what the album's called. It was numbered, wasn't it? Like five or yeah, it depends. Like uh, I've gotten into all of them, so I probably mentioned uh, mentioned of numerous times. I think three is the first one I got into. Four and five mm. are great as well. One and two are great, but they are all numbered. You can't. I'd say three or four is probably their high point for in my mind, but they still are putting out good stuff. Yeah, it might have been four actually. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just remember listening to it going, "Oh, this is different and it's good, different." So uh, again, just great musicianship and you know just music, music uh, instruments that you're probably not used to hearing as well. So like it's a, it's a nice big variety uh, that you get in there as well. So yeah, really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's kind of like spooky jams. It's very funky. Yeah. It's upbeat, but it has that those dark undertones to them. So I could see you being kind of more of a hard rock metal guy, sort of totally enjoying that. Not that you, not that you have. You mentioned Krung Bin and Abby Jean and a lot of bands that aren't metal, too. But that that it does have it has a little dark undertones to it, which I really yes. I really like about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's got almost it's it's not power metal, but like the, there's bands that that I really enjoy that I've never thought about on the show. That like um, the likes of like Power Wolf, for example, it was just hilarious and brilliant. Um, but it's got that almost storytelling undertone, you know, just just but it's atmospheric, you know, like 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 you say, just sort of from the from the depth of it. So it definitely gives me that. We're doing well so far. Coming down towards the end of our list, I have saved the best for last, the ones that are the top of the list that get the most play recommended recommendations from these two guys and a couple from uh, Brad yet. And if I, if you don't know who Brad is, Brad is a music writer on our show. He's guested on a couple episodes. He's my cousin. He's got a CD collection that would rival like the library of Congress. Yes. The, the man is a, a, a giant um, music machine and we had him chip in and help for a while. So, Got to give Brad a shout out. 
I gotta I'm gonna blast through a couple here before I because I've kind of been saving probably my most listened to one as well. We're all kind of on the same page here, mm-hmm. ironically, for once. Um, <laughs> uh, the mystery lights. Ooh, uh, yes, dude, that was my next one. What? Yeah, Shut like up, Jinx! Fucking kings! <laughs> I knew it. Um, yeah, First mystery lights. Course. Self-titled album. Brilliant. I, I I love it. I still still get that one going. Just it's hard. I don't I don't even know how to describe it. Like 60s psych rock this, almost. Yeah, like a garage garage yeah. psych rock. Was the, like, 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 sounds like low production value, right? Yeah. A little bit of, you know, kind of Sabbath caravan, you know, type. Yeah, it's just a good mood. You know, I really, really love that one. And one that kind of goes hand in hand with that to me um, is uh, the Pukes, the Revenge of the Pukes album. Uh, I think it's their only one. Mm-hmm. Like one of the guys ended up knocking this girlfriend off or something or whatever. And so that band doesn't even exist anymore, but it is a great, great album. Very uh, kind of spooky. Come out, come October. You're going to want to play that one. It just fits right in the vibe. Very, you know, fifties, early sixties kind of mojo to it. Absolutely brilliant. I love that album so much as well. Both of those are just, just in around that time frame. You, and you knowing me, you'd never, nah, you'd never I love these two albums. Brilliant. Kind of the hint, a little hint of the cramps in that Pukes record. Yeah, definitely. A tiny bit where it's got that that humor. It's it's dark. It's evil, but it's also it's just dripped in reverb and surf rock. Very fun. Mm-hmm. Very too, fun. Album. Too bad that the guy turned out to be a total asshole because I have a hard time right. putting that on these days. This is why I don't watch uh, documentaries like the Queen movie. I'm not I'm not watching it. I don't want to know. No. I want to know the music because if I find out the guy's an asshole, it it ruins everything. I can't do it. And with the pukes, I read, read a story. I'm like, oh, shit, the guy's a knob. Son of a bitch. No, I don't right. listen to the album anymore. But great callback. It's a great album. I need to get past my uh, my emotions and just put that back on the table. Yeah, there's some some instances I make uh, uh, very tough to listen to. Like, I've really had a hard time trying to listen to Ryan Adams now, which is unfortunate because he's Same. written so many great really great tunes and he's a, a a really good artist um kind of a shitty piece of shit human being but yeah. you know everybody deserves a chance to change and you know hopefully you can smart the fuck up but very hard real hard to listen to any of his stuff same kind of idea totally i'm gonna rattle off a couple of brad's recommendations sarah shook and the disarmers it's a kind of a country rock like a dark country thing she's got a great voice the album sidelong he recommended really love that record bully another band that brad recommended kind of falls in line with the emile and the sniffers that shane mentioned earlier kind of a, a harder edged female fronted band very good and then laura laura jane grace and the devouring mothers um bought to rot it's a great album that he recommended i think that she's the lead singer of uh anti-flag is that right no i get that wrong um I always oh, forget crap. the name of that band. I, Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I know the name. I'm, I know their logo and everything. It'll come to you as soon as we hit uh, stop on the uh, recorder. Always. Oh, yeah. My finest moments are usually after we hit stop. <laughs> <laughs> Got thousands of hours of that. Yeah. How many do we have left? Are we, are we down to top three, um, four? What, I think where, I've got... Where are you guys at? I've got about four. Yeah. I've got four. Okay, I'll let you guys... Okay. Knocked those off. I got one left. One really real standout. So okay, you want to start? You want to get down? Get get us started here on your fourth from the top. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've, it, it, this is in no numerical order for me. I've just been rattling through them. So um, sure, I'll go. Uh, I've got to go with Parquet Courts. Ooh, yeah. And uh, uh, Wide Awake for, for me. It, it just great. Uh, John has recommended this band a couple of times. Um, the album before this one, whose name escapes me. Uh, Listened to it, enjoyed it, but wasn't like didn't didn't grab me. Um, but Wide Awake did. Wide Awake grabbed me by, by the balls, pretty much. It was uh, just a great summer record. Um, it was the, like a, you know we had European football going on, like World Cup or Euros, whatever it was. And um, some of the the tunes on this, uh, including the football song, uh, were just brilliant. Total and football. That's it. 
And, and and you talked about Santana a little bit earlier, and there's little little bits of this that reminded me, uh, of, particularly of the you know the, the the rhythm section of the ad and the, just the instrumentation, um, a little bit of that, and uh, yeah, it just just stuck with me, really did. And so I bought the album on vinyl, been spinning it every summer. <laughs> it's just a great record. They have a see, I do brand like new the, one, the one that was before that. I believe was the Daniel Lupe and Parque Courts Milano, Milano. album. Mm-hmm. Which I love. I love that album. It's got uh, Karen O from the AAAs uh, sings on that, and I love her, and I love the AAAs. So that that album to me is that's when I listen to Parquet Courts. That's the album I go to just because Karen O is brilliant and some good tunes on there. Uh, that's one of my favorite bands. I mean, they're like top five for me right now, and they have a brand new album out. Very, very good. A brand new recommendation here: Parquet Courts' latest record. Go check it out. Yeah. But. Wide Awake is, is awesome. In my the the band I'm playing with, the neighbor, the dad band here in the cul-de-sac, we're we're actually covering total football. So that's yes, let's go, buddy. Yeah, awesome. that, tune, that tune's hitting the spot for me right now. Great, great record. Someone great got the whistle reference. Uh no. No whistle. That's a different tune actually with the whistle in it. Uh, we, uh okay. <laughs> There's one with just the whistle going all the way through and I was just like that's football. Well, that's the, what the wah pedal's for. The, the drummer was yeah. telling me uh what total football means. And they're, they're getting like really deep into when a, when a football team, and I mean soccer, by the way, when they get everybody on the same page and it just becomes like this beautiful, articulate, in unison sort of offense and defense. And at the at very end of the song, he makes a reference to American football because these guys are from New York. And the last line of that song, I didn't realize until we were covering it, but the last, sign, the last lyric in that song is, fuck Tom Brady. <laughs> so the, he, just, album of the year. he just yells at the fuck Tom Brady at the very right. end. Just got it in right at the end. Uh, excellent. Love it. Uh, fourth from the last for me. I think we are starting to get down to uh, the ones I play the most. This would be the fourth uh, least. The one I don't actually play this one much, but the Rolling Stones, Blue and Lonesome. So yes. The blues record yes. that Carl turned me on to. Rolling Stones, I've liked forever, but I just fell out of favor with them. All the recent stuff, like a take it or leave it. Or who cares? I don't seek it out. But then Carl said, hey, you, this album you need to go and listen to. It's called Blue and Lonesome. It's a blues record where they're doing a bunch of old blues standards and classics, but they just nail it. And they, it they, just feels so off the cuff. Yeah, for the stones, like you know, because the stones are very, you know, they're pros, right? Like you see the, you see the stones, you know, you, you know, they're not coming on stage at, at, at nine Oh one or nine Oh two. They're on stage right at nine o'clock, you know, mm-hmm. and they're, they're very, very professional and whatnot. And then this album is just like, everything is kind of just stripped back, just real loose, just like I said, just really off the cuff. And it's just hearing them in that kind of element. is just, that's it, it's peak. It's one of, it's one of their best albums. Totally. Totally. Great recommendation. Oh, I did you like that? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, I forgot recommended it. Um, I was I was looking back the other day, thinking, "Oh man, look at all these records." I was like, "Oh yeah, that uh, that, that blues uh, album is a great album from the Stones." Oh shoot! Um, Before you go though, I, I missed one. I, my list is so huge. I'm xing them off as I go. I saw this band open for the Black Keys, and I was I, I was impressed. I'm like, "Wow, they're really good." And then Shane really turned me on to them. Their album AM. This is the Arctic Ooh. Monkeys, and then he had. The, they're, they're, the album after this one is even more out there. It's, it's, uh, AM isn't out there. The album after it is very out there. That kind of that lounge style music that they did. Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Yeah, but I, I love the yeah. album AM. A little bit more approachable, a little bit more straightforward, but a great album in one. I think it's 2013 release. I mean, it's very early in our tenure talking music on this show. But what a great record. And I wish I could rewind time and go back and watch them open for the Black Keys again, knowing what a great album that was. I had no idea at the time. I just heard them. I'm like, wow, these guys are great. But I didn't know the record. And now I wish I could go back and knowing the record, right. hear that live. Because that makes all the difference, right? When you know the album and you see it live, it's totally different than when you don't know the record and see it live. 100%. So Arctic Monkeys, man. Okay, now I'm down to three. Uh, no, I'm down to two. No, three. Okay. I'm down to three. So. Sorry, go ahead. Go I'll on. jump back in. Something completely out of the wheelhouse, I suppose. Um, f- for me, particularly, I mean, Joel, we were going to see uh, see this person, and it just got snowed out. So uh, it's uh, Margot Price, uh, Midwest Farmer's Daughter. Oh um, yeah, 
this for, for me to listen to a country album takes some doing if i'm being brutally honest and i can't remember who recommended this this might have come in might have come in from shane was it shane yeah it was oh just, just legend listen to him great um and, and again just it just nails it like there's, there's, there's certain artists out there who get a lot of plaudits on there, like, you know, in, in the mainstream. You know, you've you've got some great female vocalists out there, and I'm not knocking them, but I listened to this album, and I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Um, Tennessee song was stuck in my head for, well, must have been a year. Like, it just, the, it's, there's such power and rawness to it. Um, it just, it's just a superb record. And um, funny story, we were actually um, coming back from download um, in uh, 20... It would have been 2017, probably, probably a year after this came out, six months or whatever. Um, uh, one of the lads I go with, Tom, he's um, he likes a bit of country, you know. Like, you know, you, you do find that metalheads are quite uh, diverse in, in some of the stuff that they enjoy, and, and probably because whenever you go to these festivals, there's something for everybody. And uh, and we speak for an hour, like, we just had this album on, on the way back on the drive home. <laughs> It was great, like you know, what a, what a great way to uh, to change the palate round um, after a weekend of um, yeah of, uh, of black metal. But uh, yeah, just I was blown away by. It. I was stoked to go and see her, uh, and unfortunately, we got snowed out, didn't we, Joel? Couldn't uh, she? Cause she couldn't get there. Yeah, I had to cancel the show. So much. We got like a foot of snow in April, mm. in Wisconsin. I bought it. Lovely. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, you did not. But uh, it was her tour bus couldn't even get to the to the venue. So yeah, the show got canceled. And- the bummer next one for me is not one album because it was at, at the time it was a song that shane picked and we played on the show and ever since that one song i've bought everything they've put out including their most recent album which is in my top albums of this year and that's deep sea diver great band out of the oh, yeah. seattle area i believe wow I, yep she uh guitar player singer was the backup guitar player, or was, excuse me, the guitar player helping Beck on one of his tours. She was Beck's guitar player, which I had no idea until I yes. saw her talk about it. And that's kind of, she mentioned how that kind of springboarded her career. Uh, but their latest release, and everything they've put out, and that song that Shane initially played way back when, Deep Sea Diver. All yeah. chalked up. Yeah, and it was like a Off. Independent release back then. I mean, it was on no one's radar, and, and you you picked that tune, Shane, and put this on my top three is something that to this day still gets a ton of play at my house. Yeah, that's yeah, that tune is just her and her like jazz master and whatnot. Just just with such a such a vibe that tune off the uh, Always Waiting EP, and then they had the full length album that came out right after that called Secrets, which is equally as brilliant. Very, very good stuff. Glad you mentioned them, man. They they are so good. Yeah, and their new record is phenomenal. She's she needs to check that. She's such a talent. And she's got the, the the pedals, she's got the tone, the amps, the pedals, the guitar. She knows her way around a fretboard and a guitar. And is a great songwriter. So she's she's hitting all the buttons. She's checking all the boxes, as we say, on this show for me. Yeah. So deep sea diver. Great recommendation. Thank you, Shane. Wow. You, that's a, yeah, man. The, the, the hits keep coming. I tell sure you, do. Um, I'm down to two now. Um, the, you know, these right. these might not be uh, probably more obvious than some of the others, but uh, Alkaline Trio uh, again, oh, man. Shane, uh, is this thing cursed? That record's brilliant. Oh. And um, again, I didn't even know they were a thing, particularly. And Shane was like, You got to listen to it. you know, this, this, you know, if you like Blink, if you like, you know, you like this, this punks, you know, listen to this. <clears throat> So uh, yeah, threw that my way, man. That's it's so good, it's so good. Um, yeah, bought the vinyl for this as well, and um, it's been a constant rotation ever since, really. So just just that a, album to... is the sinkers. That is my reverence. Yes, that is that album at that time. Every single thing on that album hit home, and it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. And I love that band so much. Totally. It's a it's a absolute belter, absolute belter. So uh, yeah, cheers for turning me on to them, mate. Yeah. Well, sticking with Shane here, and my the, my number one is from Carl, but Shane's got hey, Shane's got one more on my list, and this is it's a it's a label, but there's one album in particular that just is the the top of that that list. Both these records here, these next two, are ones that not only I love but my wife loves. And that's why they're the top two, because, you know, I'm married, 
and we listen to music together quite often. Nice. And when she loves something as much as I love something, it gets a lot more spins around the house, right? But the Chris Cresswell one week record. Oh man. My goodness. What an mm-hmm. album. Lead singer of the Flatliners or Flatliners <sighs> put out an acoustic record on one week records. Joey Capes, little acoustic. So Joey Cape, legendary from Lagwagon and, and many other projects, has the stripped down like acoustic little thing going on with punk artists. And they get there and they bare their souls with an acoustic guitar and you get rid of all the power chords and all the metal and all, and all the punk and all the drums. And this guy, Chris Cresswell, I mean, my goodness, like, forget about all his lineage and all those other act, those projects. This is where it's at for this guy. I want to hear more acoustic stuff from Chris Cresswell. The, the man is just amazing vocalist and, and uh, guitar player and such great songs. So I, I ended up picking up the vinyl and my wife and I play this one all the time. And it's on all of our uh, Spotify and Apple Music playlists as well where it's available. But Chris Cresswell's One Week Record, man. Easy number two for me. Yeah, stunning. Just, just a beautiful, beautiful acoustic record. Highly, highly recommend you check that one out. And he's Canadian too. Toronto, Ontario boy. So, yeah. And the One Week Record label, uh, Seth Anderson, Walt Hamburger. Well, I think I just, I think I discovered Walt Hamburger, even though he's in my backyard, I discovered him through Shane, which is pretty wild. But yeah, one week records, check that out. And of course, Chris Cresswell's one week record, highly recommended. All right. Last one, boys. Down to, All number, right. down to number one. You're back I'll in. Go first since it's, there you go. Uh, an album that I've probably heard of through watching countless hours of all my favorite artists talk about and mention and never once would have even thought of looking it up and actually listening to it and seeing who these guys are or anything. But it's probably one of the most influential albums, late seventies. And it wasn't until Joel recommended this one that I've just fell in love with. And it's, my favorite album that has been recommended on the show uh, is Gang of Four's Entertainment. Oh, yeah. And start to finish, I've always, I always have this album on. It's brilliant. One of the tunes on there, At Home, He's a Tourist, is some of my favorite guitar work I've heard. It's just brilliant, unorthodox, just completely out there, just like the whole album is. And it's absolutely amazing. So thank you to Joel for bringing this one in. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. And rest in peace. Guy just passed away a year ago. Got a chance, yeah. got a chance to see him live with a different singer. Cause the other guy was not in the band anymore. I think his guitar player was the only original member left, but yeah, he's, he's the guy, right? This, his guitar work on the record. So good. Yeah. That one came from Shay. Actually, she wanted to go to the show. She's like, yeah, you ever heard of them? I'm like, no. And she's gave, gave me that finger like, oh, uh, uh, uh. how do you not know of this band? <laughs> well, babe, because they're in the late 70s. I just had no clue. Turned me on to it, went and saw the show, and I had to bring it to ABOG and recommend it to these guys. I just thought it was so great. So I'm glad, I'm glad you appreciate that one, Shane. Cheers. You can thank Shay for that one. Will do. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, the last one I've got on my list isn't one. Of, it's not like my number one. I've just been going through them, but uh, the last one I've got here. And um, what, what intrigued me about it most was a shame. It's like I'm going to go. I've got tickets for both the shows, like the night after each other. And I was like, oh shit, you must really uh, be into this. Um, and it's the long shot. Love is for losers. Yes. And, um, Let's go. Brad had, I think Brad had put this in his favourites of the year as well, the same year. And um, and I was like, yeah, I'll pick this up. But you know, I, I like Billy Joe. I, like, I do like Green Day. But I think. I would never have found out about this record if it wasn't for shame because I uh, don't know about a lot of people out there, but kind of you, you, I came off Green Day um, quite, you know, a, a while back. Like I, yeah. I love American Idiot and me and Shane have had many conversations about uh, different opinions on American Idiot, um, but, which I think was a masterpiece. But um, and, and the stuff after that just kind of go down a little bit, but um, it, I probably wouldn't have been connected and picked this up if it wasn't for Shane on the show going, yeah, this is a side project. This is great. I'm going to the shows. Um, and it just, it, it just made me smile. Like I just put it on and I'm like, yeah, this is just almost that kind of fifties rock and roll that, you know, someone like Billy Joe was just made. It just, it just fits into it so well. Um, and it's just an awesome record. Really, really fun. And, um, 
yeah, one that I'm just I would have you know you know you know the things that you would have missed, and and you come back to five years ago. Oh shit, I didn't realise he did that. Like, uh, and then you discover it. So I didn't miss the boat. So thank you. One of the one of the absolute best shows I've ever seen. Oh, I bet. I was lucky enough to see them. They did just clubs and bars, basically, and saw them at the rickshaw, which is like maybe five hundred people tops, and it doesn't feel like that many people on there once you get in there and seeing somebody who has had the, the, the amount of success and played arenas all over the world, stadiums, you know, all over the world and whatnot. And to bring that energy into a club was just second to none. Like uh, he, he doesn't get enough recognition for how great of a stage presence he has. And to be able to just bounce from any sort of venue and just pull it off like like nothing just like that is is rare and and he's definitely well talented in doing that back when we started doing music i was really hoping this show would be would be the next best thing since sliced bread and that we could help all these amazing local and independent artists find an ear because there's so much talented music that we've shared we started off by playing music on the show playing songs so each episode we play three or four songs talk about them a little bit kind of in between everything else that we were talking about and that was shane and i at the time is before carl joined but local music i just wanted to give a shout out to local music we've had so much local music represented here on our show and we, we hope that we've made made a little bit of a dent in in some years out there for some people to help get all this amazing music that never sees the light of day out to some ears and that I took such pride in that early on. I was really hoping we could we could help those artists. You know what I mean? It was like a, a goal of ours, of mine especially, yeah. and I'm sure the other two guys here as well. But this artist, my, my last one, local to Birmingham, where Carl is. And I don't you, you look them up and I don't I don't see much out there about these guys. So I, I, I think like Brett Newski and Abby Jean and some of these other artists we've talked about, local to Milwaukee and local to Shane in, in Vancouver. Pretty sure they're pretty local to Carl, and I don't think they've done a whole lot else. But Wolf People, the album is Ruins. Yeah, let's love, go. Love that record. <laughs> love that. And the song, the, the song King Fisher. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's played in my house like every 10th song. When we're doing like a, had a few, had a few drinks, a couple glasses of wine maybe, and we're doing the, the jukebox thing on the, on the stream services, this one's always on the list. The Wolf People. And if my wife were to give her favorite albums from ABOG, I'm willing to bet this would be her choice as well. So The Wolf People, I think for Christmas a couple years ago, I ordered it, shipped it overseas, gave it to her as a Christmas gift. And it was like her favorite gift, you know, that whole year. Like, oh, oh my God, amazing. The Wolf People record. She, uh, a friend has a podcast called Mojo Menace. In their Discord, they took turns having people do like a jukebox thing with music. And my wife was the first one on their discord to do a jukebox thing and she played that too and all of them were like oh my god this wolf people this wolf people is so great so carl's recommendation from local man from birmingham england a lot of local music here today and throughout the years on abog and so proud to have done our small little part wish we could have done more for these amazing local bands that deserve to be superstars that's awesome i'm so i'm so glad that you've uh that you've got that in there. It's still, I still play that album a hell of a lot. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, the band did uh, announce a hiatus, indefinite hiatus, in like January 2020, uh, pretty much just before COVID. Um, but uh, you never know. You never know where something might, uh, might crop up. Because I keep looking, I keep, it's one of the first names I look for on the festival circuit. And just like, well, maybe they're playing in some little tent or something. That'd be just awesome. But, uh, but yeah, not not managed to, uh, to see these guys yet. But fingers crossed they'll carry on at some point. You never know, but uh, yeah, if you haven't if you haven't heard, it, it's a just fantastic record. Talented guys. Mm. My beer's empty. I've been having such a good time here. I have completely emptied my glass. Great. I need to grab another one. Are you guys ready to share your beers, or do we need to take an edit break? Go grab some cups, some some glasses. Where are I'm, we I'm ready. All right. I uh, but we can we can break. Yeah, let's have a quick break. I need to. Uh, yeah, I got rock a piss here, boys. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back, man. That was good. We 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 got our beers, boys. We oh good? yeah, oh yeah. 
What do you think? Mm -mm. All right. right. Do you hear that one here? I got mine here. It's been one of my one of my favorites. Um, Obviously, from the fine folks at uh, Parallel Forty Nine. This is one of the one of the first beers that I really started to enjoy from them, and they probably became my brewery after uh, drinking this. But it's an old uh, used to be called Gypsy Tears, but then somebody got offended. What by the term gypsy? So they changed it to Ruby Tears. Uh-huh. It's a red ale. It's six percent. Very very hoppy, especially for a red ale. You don't red ales aren't usually very hoppy, but this one is, and it is absolutely dynamite. I've had probably a dozen of them on on the shows over the years. Uh, also, I just remembered the best beer Ricky Gervais has ever had. His quote, mm. not mine. And um, yeah, they ended up uh, doing a little thing and uh, donated some money um, off of all the sales and whatnot to a charity that he picked in Canada and whatnot, which is great. Raise some money for it. And I uh, went to uh, you know some animals. I know he's a big uh, uh, he supports you know uh, things that that we support uh, like beer. And I'm going to support this beer by um, yeah, just a proper red ale, real good, nice West Coast, bit malty, bit hoppy full flavor excellent beer so ruby tears from parallel 49 is what i'm going with with our second to last episode of beers love it with a classic mm. what do you what do you got carl i'm gonna pull this bad boy right now um i've gone back to the wonderful guys of vocation and uh it's december boys so do you know what that do you know what time it is in december it's beer time carl no, not beer time, a particular kind of beer. Oh, stout season, of course. It's oh, stout gonna... season, yeah, it is. Um, so I don't know if you can see this red tinge in this air. It probably doesn't come through on the camera. No, it yep, doesn't. A little caramelling, especially not for the the audio listener. But it does have a nice head there to it. Mm. Nice mm. frothy, almost like a root beer sort of head to it. Yeah. So, vocation do do some killer stouts. They really do. Um, this is uh, this is a new current favorite. It's called Abduction. And it's got a little little design on the camera, which is pretty cool, almost like a video game, not one of these uh, um, kind of eight bit style little hot, little mothership beaming somebody up there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a uh, raspberry and plum stout, so it's just Ooh. raspberry. It's pretty killer, I've got to say. Um, yeah, it's eleven uh, percent, so it's not one that you can. This is what you want to chug beers at the beginning of the show. Um, rather strong. Uh, really sweet but it's just got like a tartiness to it you know and just get that little like that lip smack i like that tartiness especially in those uh mm. stouts and porters or parkside did theirs had a bit of raspberry mm. in there as well mm. just get you in the cheeks there son oh i love raspberry yeah, raspberry does mm. yeah super super they did great stouts though my wife and i did some holiday shopping yesterday and i didn't have time for breakfast so i had a bowl of raspberries in the car on our shopping trip and a blown opportunity my first beer which i drank far too fast to get Mm. to this segment to share it was a pop this is based on a tootsie roll pop raspberry flavored tootsie roll pop oh man so totally blown opportunity but had to bring it up because i also had a raspberry beer that is now deceased very delicious yeah, but instead, I went to an old faithful IPA, just just IPA, India Pale Ale. This is by Half Acre Brewing out of Chicago, called High and Dry. It's an India Pale Ale, I think, and I've been on ABOG for ten years. Started without glasses. Now I require glasses to read <laughs> the small print on these cans. I think Let's it's go, buddy. I think it's a high six. It could be in high eight. It's a very small font, uh, but uh, I, this is my first time trying it. I just picked this up. I love Half Acre Brewing, like all their stuff. I've never tried this before. It's going in for the first taste. Oh, just it's just a, a good IPA, nice, nice and nice and hoppy. A little malt on the back end, good color to it. It's almost a hazy color, but I, not, it's not a hazy. Definitely, it just very a, golden. Uh, thank you. Very golden. Tangerine. Yeah, but but not tasting that way. Just a no. so, just a solid IPA and a neat little can that my friends 
Shane and Carl can see here on camera. It's pretty cool. Delicious. It's a bit of a Radiohead mm. type can with the the dome in there, the high and dry. Yeah, like a little head coming out of an oasis in a desert or something. Ooh. But cheers, but gentlemen. She said the magic word. To the to the second to last episode of ABOG. We raise our glasses to you. Thank you for being here with us on this journey. We appreciate all of you. And uh, we're going to keep all the content out there for a year, at least. So abandagamers.com, uh, all your podcast feeds. Go back and give those old episodes a listen. Keep your boys going. We don't have to leave you if you don't leave us. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. Just keep, just keep listening. Deep. Let's go, boys. Just keep listening. <laughs> all right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Next episode, Cheers. and we've got some more content. Don't hang up. Don't go away just yet. Don't turn off your players. We've got more, but just a little, oh, little shout. The next episode will be our last. And we're going to, we've saved up a few little emails. You guys have, some of you have reached out to us. So don't fret. We will share some of that stuff in the next episode, along with lots of beers, lots of fun. Yeah. And uh, who knows what else. But we want to leave, we want to leave a little legacy out there with our last couple episodes. The, the past episode 251, we talked about all our favorite moments, all our favorite episodes giving you some stuff to go back and listen to this episode of course all the music that you can search our website abandagamers.com and go back and listen to all those original conversations if you never heard us play songs on the show before great time to go back and listen to those now discover some new music and i don't know if you know this we don't talk about it much but abandagamers.com slash set list you can see a listing of all the tunes we played on the show so give that a whirl all right guys the last ever E penis segment where you can raise oh, oh. raise that wow. PlayStation number. If you have a low PlayStation number, again, dig into the archives because we can get you to high numbers in a very large E genitalia with the help of Shane and Carl. And this is the last one. <laughs> Can't wait to hear it, right. boys. Oh man, going into the last one, and I was thinking, how did this even start? And um, I don't know. I think there was just a bit of a joke. I'm sure me and Shane, it's probably like most great things in life, uh, probably came from just chatting and drinking a beer and playing a video game. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we should share some of these crazy dumb games on the show, right? Um, because there's so many people out there who love getting Xbox achievement points, love getting trophies. And um, it's a whole thing. Like It's really competitive. There's a whole little... Uh, little meta market out there with those, these people. And you might listen to the show and think, man, Shannon and Carl are crazy playing these questionable games for, uh, you know, just for that little platinum. That little, that little ping. Um, but some people have multiple storefronts. Some people buy these games eight times over to get eight times the amount of platinum. So that, that's just, you know, my heart goes off to them. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, what started as a bit of a, you know, a bit of satire, a bit of, bit of fun. Um, quickly changed into this crazy, you know, just a whirlwind on social media. Like people love it. People enjoy the section. And the phrase e-penis has, uh, has just, you know, it's bled its way through into uh, the, the daily language, you know, which is fantastic. So, um, yeah, I thought it would be a good, ch good chance. We've got one last one, haven't we, Shane? So we, we can share that one first, if you like, and then we'll just say what, we, what, what our highlights have been, what our favorite ones have been. Right. I didn't think of the, the segment that we would do it wasn't every show but you know every so often we'd have the segment and like there'd be one two three four and whatnot and then people start we'd be getting messages like hey when you do another ep you know people <laughs> people are mad for it yeah. it's, a, it's a fan <laughs> favorite so for the last time abog ep the final one and there's no game more fitting than this it is called the pig d and it's probably by far the simplest one I've come across. Uh, what happens is there is a piggy bank on the screen and there is a coin that falls from the top of the screen into the piggy bank as you are holding R1 down. And you continuously hold R1 down. And after about two or three minutes, the little timer, as it keeps counting, all the coins going in, You'll have a platinum trophy. <laughs> the oh easiest one yet. And <laughs> I came across this one a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, this is perfect for the last one. This, it, 
doesn't get more eping than this. Absolutely brilliant. Just a coin slowly falling into a piggy bank. You got our one held down. Pling, pling, pling. The trophies start popping. And literally within a couple minutes, you will have another platinum trophy. Now it's not cross buy for like PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. However, it is only about $1.99. So for four bucks, you get the experience of the Pig D and two platinum trophies ish, somewhere around there. Don't quote me, but cheap, super easy, couple minutes of your time. The, the, the fitting end to the EP doesn't get better than this, boys. <laughs> so true. And if you want to exercise those fingers, you can just press the X button uh, and manually drop those coins down. If you, uh, if you need a bit of you know track and field practice, you feel a bit rusty at the old button mashing, you know, consider it a workout tool as well. But yeah, yeah it is a fitting one, to be fair, to, to end the, uh, the, the, the segments. Um, but as we've been playing through these mini shine, we discovered some some brilliant platinum trophies, some some fun ones, some absolutely god awful ones. So we thought we'd just, you know, as a bit of a refresher, just share a few of the ones that we've we've enjoyed, you know, or or hated. I don't know what Shane's got, but uh, right. Um, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll start off with uh, with ones that I did enjoy, which is, um, you know, they they, they take a little bit longer. Uh, the Telltale games, uh, I think, you know, if you want to get if you want to increase your your uh, your e bulge, uh, then you know. And you want a story that goes along with you know with these games, the the Telltale games are, are, are a decent way. You know, if you can find them for like two bucks, three bucks, um, definitely worth picking up. Um, the the Wolf Among Us is actually a really really good story. Um, if you like the Green Fairy Tale stuff, it's um, it's well worth you know probably ten bucks anyway. Um, and uh, Batman as well. The Batman ones are great. Borderlands. Another good one. I really enjoyed that. If you if you're a fan of Borderlands, you like the story in the Borderlands uh, games, and you want to go back a bit and learn a little bit about a little bit about Handsome Jack, then uh, they're definitely worth your time. Um, you know, they're, they're not necessarily as quick six hours, eight hours maybe, um, but uh, but the good games. You know, and it, um, it it just you want to you want to sprinkle in some decent games with the with the dross. That that's that's the key to keeping the the energy levels going, Shane. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, and, and let's not forget that first Walking Dead Telltale game, which is absolutely mm. brilliant. Uh, you don't even need to be a fan of the show. I'm living proof of that. And it's just a fantastic story. Um, you're definitely not expecting the ending. I'm not going to spoil anything, even though it's been out for probably like 30 years. But uh, a fantastic one that really kind of kicked off you know, Telltale and bringing out the wolf among us shortly thereafter and like carl said batman borderlands you know just some great great games to sit through some good visual novels uh you guys awesome. have to you have to mention red Alaka games if you're going to be talking oh. about the legacy of abog and uh, the ep section well, I mean, how can you forget? You know, um, it was someone was always going to do it. You know, you're going to get one studio that decided to release every bang average mobile phone game into, onto the uh, onto the console market so that people could get these trophies. You know, and uh, Rattlecker have been brilliant at, with, with that. And I don't know about you, Shane, but I know that whenever there's a sale on the store. I'm looking to sound just search by Rattlecker. What's fifty percent off? What's seventy five percent off? Right. And then just scoop them up. Scoop them up on the Vita, on the PS4, on the PS5. Scoop them all up and they get those multi plats. Um, and they've just, you know, in all fairness, they've done some decent games. Um, Darkest Dungeon, uh, Devious Dungeon, I should say, was really, really good. Um, just a fun little game, anyway. And uh, I think I've got the plat on that on the Vita, on the PS4, and um, uh, Devious Dungeon 2. I've still got to get the plat on the PS4, but I have got it on the Vita. And, like, it's they're just good games, anyway. Uh, good little platformers. Um, Fragments of Under- Underpart. Oh, Thunderpool. Yeah, Thunderpool. That's that's a good one. Um they, they they really do you know do a good job with some of these these little platformers. And if you're older, uh, you know, if you you're from a certain generation where eight bit, sixteen bit platformers, you know, they were kind of the thing, you know, they do a really good job at replicating those. Um yeah, they they've they've done a good job with some of them. Anything stand out for you, Shane? Uh Metagal, which is kind of a Mega Man. Mm-hmm kind of tribute type uh, game. I wasn't a big Mega Man fan, but uh, if you are, that's a fun little one. Um, and we can't, we can't talk about the EPM without the OG himself. My name is Mayo. Oh, yeah. I mean, though it's kind of oh, the yeah. one yeah. that kind of started it all when it came to, you know, the easy 
cheap and easy platinum. So I think this game was like a buck or two. You just mash that X button. And it actually, to be fair, you know, for, for folks laugh at that one, but the story in it is actually kind of, kind of fun. You know, all the different, you know, costumes and, and characters and dialogue and whatnot. It is a very, very fun one and uh, not to be skipped, not to be skipped at all. Most people probably have uh, tackled that one, but superb. Like I said, the OG himself, um, funny truck, which is one that came out, I think within oh, the past gosh. year or so. And it is probably <laughs> the, one of the worst, uh, I, who knows how this got greenlit and approved. <laughs> You know, by the the fine folks at Sony to get this one out there, but it is is a tough is a tough one to sit through. But hey, you get a platinum out of it. Um, what I I don't think I ever mentioned on the show and whatnot, but it's called Jazz Punk, and it's a really really neat story. It probably takes maybe a couple hours, maybe an hour, hour and a half or so, but it's just a really weird kind of environment, like almost kind of kind of sixties ray gun. It's really, really, it's a real neat one. I, I got really motion sick playing it, so I had to take a break part way through. So it probably took me a lot longer than you know the kids nowadays. But it was a quirky one that was really, real fun. I always liked that one. Um, Her Majesty Spiffing, which is oh, a, yeah. you know, which was a brilliant one, which you rarely ever see go on sale. It is not cheap, but it is a fun playthrough and an easy plat. And um, you know, lastly was uh, Puzzle Showdown 4K which I'd mentioned a long, long time ago. Uh, me and my homie, Brian, we ended up picking that one up because it's like, oh, it's an easy platinum one on. It's like the hardest one to get is, you know, you got to do a puzzle of like 456 pieces and you got two hours to do it. And it was like Friday night, you know, nine o'clock. Let's, let's, all right, let's do it. So we just started one by one going through the puzzles, doing them at the same time, you know, in the chat. And then getting to the puzzle where we got to do, we had two hours to do it. And it was literally like 10 minutes to midnight when we, when we finished and whatnot and just staying up. And we're literally both like probably a foot away from the screen, trying to get those last pieces in to try to beat the timer and whatnot. It was just, it was a memorable experience of getting an easy plat that, yeah, I probably won't forget. It's just a, just a good time. Yeah. Yeah. There's some great memories with this stuff. And, uh, and I think it, it's always set off by the fact that you've got some platinums which aren't, you know, which aren't so easy. You know, you, you, there's, there's some you just, you're just like, oh, yeah, I want to get that. I want to get that plat. Um, but do you think uh, that you'll carry on getting these, Shane, like even when we don't do the show anymore? Absolutely. Yes, I think I will. <laughs> Absolutely. There's so many fun ones. And, and the, you know what? I mean, we've still got, you know, the our social media feeds aren't going anywhere. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm sure there'll be recommendations of you know albums you know easy plats or something there's still you know little bits might hear from us you know things that we just absolutely have to recommend in the name of apog but you know we'll see but i'll definitely you know when there's a, a cheap and easy plat, you know i'm gonna be all over it Good do we plan. have a do we have an e-penis channel in our discord server do you know i don't think we do I mean, By might, the time the show comes out, we might. You, we will. Yeah. you guys should add one. Yeah, that might be a good place for folks to continue to interact with us and build up those e-penises together as a community. That's right? a good idea. Full circle back to our origins. Community. Absolutely. And um, yeah, we had a nice little message this week on, uh, on, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, from uh, you know, a, 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 not only a top man but a listener to the show, uh, Dan. He lives in France. You should uh, you should save that though for the next episode. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? We probably should. You should because I have a surprise. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, little, little, oh shit. A little bit of okay. a little bit of a surprise here. Now this is something that we do off off recording, off camera, if you will. We hit stop, and something happens often. Mm -hmm on ABOG. And I thought for our second to last <gasps> episode, we would leave it recording, but have a little further of a chat. You guys have any clue what I'm talking about, Shane and Carl? I think I do. Yeah. I don't. Is this a new person rocking in? New person rocking in. It's exactly Whoa. correct. So we'll, we'll leave it recording. This person is on their way into the green room. What? We'll leave it recording. Let's go. She has no idea that she's going to be recorded until she gets down here. 
but I'll tell her when she gets here. We're going to have my wife, Shay, join Shane and Carl, which is a tradition here at ABOG, one that we've never shared on the show. But I'm going to ask her, what does ABOG mean to Shay? What does it mean to you, Shay? And I want to hear her tell Carl and Shane what ABOG means to her. And she's been a big part of this through me, through us three, for the 10 years we've been doing this. Maybe she'll get sentimental. Maybe she'll bring up wolf people. Maybe she'll talk Ooh. Xbox. <laughs> I have no idea. Who said the bit out to this? She thinks she's coming down just to say hi, like we always do. But I'm going to surprise her and say, hey, I'm, you're, being, you're being recorded, and this is what I want you to talk about. I will duck away, drink my beer, like I always do when she joins the show. True. Shane, I think so. Shane and Carl, maybe we'll give her like a five-minute ceiling so we don't go too long here. You guys can end the show. Here she is. All right. Hey, Shay. So this is a little bit of a surprise to you. I just surprised the guys. I'm going to have you put the headphones on. You're going to talk in the mic like you always do to these two. I am still recording. We're going to have it. Did you let the cat down here? I did. Okay. I didn't know we were I'll, yes. I'll take care of the maniac yes, cat on. who's meowing in the other room. I'd like you to tell, this is our second to last episode, I'd like you to tell the listeners and Shane and Carl, not you, Domino. Like, oh goodness. You can tell the two guys what ABOG, and, our, and to the listeners, what ABOG means to you, Shay. Give you like five minutes. That sound good? Okay. All right, totally on the spot. Here we go. I'll take care of Domino and drink my beer. Close out the show, guys. After right, Shay is done. It. Wow, this is a first. <laughs> We'll talk, don't worry, we'll talk you through it. We'll kids, kid gloves. Wow. So putting me on the spot here, I didn't realize this was going to happen after a right? whole entire afternoon of wrapping presents. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> oh, it's just wrapping presents. It's all I've done all but, afternoon. <laughs> well, there's no better gift than, uh, than just so not off the so to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> So how you, how you been? You, you didn't accidentally uh, wrap up one of those kitties or anything to send out to uh, Vancouver, Canada? Well, if we do, it's going to be the one that was meowing at the top of his lungs right behind us here, not knowing that we are still recording. <laughs> so I'll send him Bless your way. Him. <laughs> oh, such a beaut. How you been? I've been good. I've been real good. Yeah. Last work is slowing down finally, so that's great. So I had an afternoon just yeah. to be able to watch some football and wrap some presents. So it's all good. All good stuff. Excellent. Yeah. Nice. And there's only a couple more of these shows to do as well. You know, we normally we the three of us will have a little chat when Joel goes away and has a beer and mm -hmm. you know. I mean, for for you, Shay, how has A B O G how how's it been for you? Like how do, you know, mm -hmm. what what does it mean f to you from Joel's perspective? Yeah. Um I can't comment on the video game stuff at all because that you know, That's I've okay. got I've got a couple things I you like. You can talk about stuff, right? Yeah, whatever. Like that, it has nothing, it means nothing to me. What means to me, um, what AOB is, ABOG has meant to me, is honestly meeting the two of you and becoming good friends with the both of you. Um, not only for Joel, but for me too. So I look forward to our chats, you know, after you guys are done recording and we sit back and talk for a few minutes. Um, I appreciate the friendship that we have in you. Um, you guys have become two of our closest friends. So... To me, that's what ABOG has meant, no. and nothing more, nothing less. Some good music has come out of it, and I've gotten to get to know some new artists through you guys, which is great because I, I love that, but that's secondary to the friendship. So I would say, more than anything, I'm so glad that we met you guys. Yeah. Oh, Damn. That's, that's just, yeah, we said that to you. We said and that's, that's, yeah. but that, and that's what ABOG became. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it started out in, you know, just video games and, you mm -hmm. know, getting the music in there, but never, ever expected no. the relationships that, you know, no. the three, the four of us, the five of us have, Yeah, you know, uh, never, never expected anything yeah. like this to yeah. come out of it. I know. But it's been an absolute blessing. Yeah. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, you know, just... There's so much stuff that goes on in the world and so much stuff with being online that there's a lot of negative and that's all fair, but where the positives come in is stuff like this. And it's so great. And it's not, you know, it's not something that I think people, um, 
talk about as much. So I am really grateful and I, I think it's just amazing. So it's awesome. Yeah. That's what it's meant to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. And we've just spent a load of time talking about music and talking about mm -hmm. uh, all of our favorite albums mm -hmm. we've introduced to each other. Joel hit a surprise curveball right at the end there with his uh, number one. Well, uh, being, oh. I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's Wolf People. Oh, good. Because it should be. <laughs> that band is amazing. I mean, they're, yeah, I, that's awesome. I'm looking at his list here right now, and that's awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff on here, actually. Um, Deep Sea Diver oh, yeah. is really great. Um, I really enjoy them. Fontaine's DC is fantastic. There, there's been a lot of really good music that you guys have recommended over the years. So it's really, really fantastic to to have discovered new stuff. You know, and that's what we like to hear what our friends are listening to and check it out. So, yeah, absolutely. Wolf and it gives me an opportunity, as Joel mentioned earlier, when I mentioned to him that probably one of my favorites ever that I've learned of on the show was actually recommended by, recommended by yourself, Gang of Four's Entertainment. Oh, God. I love, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I is, love that album. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Just become an absolute staple. And yeah. I'm always, always at some point listening to that one. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's such yeah. a great album. Yeah. And Joel just pointed down his paper here. I was just trying to read Chris Cresswell's album. Oh, my gosh. I love that album. Right? That. You know, I the Flatliners are great. Like I like them, but I'll tell you something that that one week record of his, I I think it's beautiful. I think it's just an amazingly awesome album. Yeah, see all this great music. Right. <laughs> Can't go wrong. It's the one constant. It always carries on. Th those one week records are brilliant. Um, I must admit, I do like um, what hamburgers. I, I, oh, it's yeah. uh, again resonated with me with the yeah. with the whole like you know just traveling from hotel to hotel and just you know drinking and going out and just you know, with strangers it just it's just it, it kind of tells a really sad sorrowful mm. story of like life on the road and like what mm. it's like for some of these musicians who are busting their asses mm. and going out there and totally. you know we, we, we've we've given brett the heads up already you know mm. brett newski did a fa fantastic job and um he's the, the book that he's bringing out mm -hmm. as well just highlighting a lot of these things you know how, pe how people feel in social situations and how people feel um you know just just trying to go get on with his life like it's uh some some deep stuff in his one week records they are really revealing i think mm -hmm. for the artists i would agree and especially like and i agree about walt hamburger i mean he's fantastic and really um a really good songwriter um i really don't you know obviously i think it's an opportunity for him to be discovered because um he's not maybe as well known and i think he's in a, a really strong tremendous um songwriter. And Chris Cresswell, I think what I like about it so much is that, like I said, the Flatliners are so, something totally different than what his one week album is. And it's just beautiful, you know, and what talent he has yeah. to be able to to go back and forth between those two very different genres in terms of what he's doing. I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, the Chris Cresswell, the Wall Hamburger and the, and the Seth Anderson mm -hmm. album to me is, I don't go back to it very often because mm -hmm. it's it's it can be a bit heavy to listen to at times and I got to be kind of, you know, at the right speed and the right mm -hmm. pace and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, you know, when I'm really in the mood for, you know, like, all right, you know, you put it on and whatnot, but that, those three mm -hmm. for me from the, uh, you know, the one week stuff is just ace, man. All, all those guys, brilliant stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're pretty lucky around here. I mean, and you guys are too. You got these great artists that are from your neck of the woods that we would have never, I mean, how do you discover those, right? Unless you have a friend telling you about them. Yeah. You know, the fact that we've got like Joseph Huber here and Field Report and these really awesome bands that we've been able to share with you and then the audience, hopefully it's resonated with some of your listeners too. Um, you know, these local artists, whether they're from your area, Shane, or from your area, Carl, it's so important to get their name out there because to your point, they're going from hotel to hotel and traveling around and trying to make a living out of it. And it's not a glamorous life by any stretch. Oh. Wow. Well said. Well said. Um, I suppose before we close it out and, uh, and go into that very last, last episode, um, you like a little game every now and again, Shay. You know, you like your your, your, your daily little game and uh, yeah. Animal Crossing. What, what what does your village look like in Animal Crossing at the moment? Have you it, been it, back for a while? No, or? it's a hot mess. Poor, yeah, yeah. poor animals. <laughs> poor animals. <laughs> Have they all left? Oh my gosh, there's more, there's so many weeds. They're probably all just entrenched in weeds right now. Poor, poor animals. So, no. 
I have not been back. Um, I still play my little iPad gardening game every day. I have been playing that thing for probably seven years, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. I know. I just thought of it the other day. Like, I've been playing this game for a long time. It's kind of sad. But it is what it is. It's just an easy play for half an hour, just whatever little puzzle game, and then move on. Yeah. Absolutely. I haven't even been back to Don't Starve either. I kind of let that one go a little bit too. Mm. I think I've exhausted that one as best I could. Um, right. You know. Was it was it playing with me and Shane that did it for you? <laughs> no, yeah. that that was absolutely <laughs> was hilarious. Are you kidding me? That was phenomenal. <laughs> I love that because it's it's so you're trying to help. You know, like I was trying to help teach like what you do, but at the same time I wanted you to discover stuff on your own. But then it's so infuriating True. for new people, and I know because I was there, you die so easily. <laughs> it's oh yeah. Actually, yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> I'm just like I'm dead again. Yeah. And then I like, just hear Shane just going, I'm, I'm a ghost, I'm all right. <laughs> just, yeah. just do this thing. <laughs> it's all right. Just just roll around as a ghost for a while. Yeah. That game was incredibly hard. I mean, really, really difficult. And uh, But so much fun. You know, once you got the hang of it and once you got going with it, it was great. It was a brilliant game. He was a Vancouver developer too, a local guy out here. Was it really? Oh, I believe so. That's awesome. I yeah. have to quickly Google that. Great game. Great game. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Okay, well, well, I guess we better close it out until next episode. Joel always does this. This feels weird. Um, Take her home, sunshine. It's your yeah. turn. I guess we will. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, we, we're not getting anywhere. We've got one more episode lined up, and uh, you know, please feel free. Next episode is probably going to be a mix of drinking and just talking. To, you know, telling some stories, talking about you guys. Uh, you know, the, the show would uh, as much as we have enjoyed doing this between the three of us we are you know we wouldn't be if it wasn't for you and uh, you know please you know email in message us you know you, you know we can reach us uh, anything you want to ask us anything you want us to talk about you've got one last chance this is it this, this is the last shot so uh, yeah see you Jamona. In, see you in the next episode